Hello everyone, welcome to Task Farm Uganda, we redefine agribusiness. My name is Margaret Baluka and today we have come with something new. So as Task Farm, we are here to help you in boosting your agriculture production. First and foremost, we want to remind you that um, as we prepare our gardens, as we prepare to get money or to have money or to harvest money from our gardens, there are particular things that we have to put in action before we get high products. Right now we have traveled as far as Gulu. We are in Gulu right now and um, most of us who stay here in Uganda, for some of you who are watching us outside Uganda, um, Uganda, we have a, a district called Gulu and it is a hot area. But this time as Task Farm, we have come to show you that even if your place is hot, even if the climate isn't good for vegetables, we can help you to produce the good products or the good vegetables that you can take to the market and harvest some money for yourself. Right now, I'll not talk so much. I want us to go and join uh, Lawrence and he'll be explaining to her, us how best we can get our high and quality products from agriculture. Greetings to you all. My name is uh, Wangechi Lawrence Masharia. I'm a project engineer working with uh, Task Farm Uganda. Task Farm in Uganda, we are in Kabusu, Rubaga, Kampala. That's where our head office is. And um, we do a number of things. One of them is we do farm infrastructures as a company. Uh, we install irrigation systems, we do greenhouse, uh, greenhouse systems and greenhouse structures. Um, we install solar dryers. Solar dryers uh, vary in different types, sizes and purpose. Uh, we also do uh, a lot of uh, water harvesting. Uh, we train farmers on uh, several farming practices and so much more than that. You can come and visit us in Lubaga, you'll be able to learn more. Today, um, we are in Lacho Hospital, Gulu. That is St. Mary's Hospital in Lacho. Gulu, Northern Uganda. In Northern Uganda, we are managing the, 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 farm, the hospital farm that does, um, the farm was set aside for as a nutritional program for the hospital to simply support um, the nutritional department of the hospital. And as Task Farm, we came in uh, on the management basis to be able to manage the farm and to be able to produce the, the, um, the different kind of foods that they need at the hospital. And also to be able to uh, teach the, 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 the community around uh, on the same in the production of or better production of different kind of uh, foods that they need that uh, they had observed that the community doesn't have. Uh, today we are in a four and a half acres uh, farm located in uh, just behind the hospital and that's where we are doing the production that we have. Right now I'm studying in, um, in a field of tomato of cabbages and um, these cabbages are not yet ready, they are still a month away. Uh, but uh, we are going to see much more. This is just one of the crops that we have. We have a number of crops. Uh, we do cabbages, we do tomatoes, we do what we call maracuang or hibiscus. We do jute marrow, we do amaranth, we do okra, we have uh, kales, we have sukumawiki, we have spinach. We have um, uh, biriganya, we have eggplants, and several other things. So we are going to see them shortly, so kindly hold on. Okay, Lawrence, 
before we go to uh, you showing us the, the, the other gardens that we have, there's someone who is watching us and they're wondering, how did you come up with such beautiful vegetables in Gulu? You know our home is hot. Oh yeah. Yes. Gulu is hot, the sun is super nice. Yes. And um, well, to come up with such kind of a crop, mm -hmm. of course it's not a one day's affair. Yes. So it requires preparation. You have to do your soil, you have to prepare your soil right. Yes. Uh, you have to do uh, assessment of your soil to be able to know what don't you have in your soil so that you can be able to apply that which you don't have. Um, in a more basic way, the soil needs to be able to feed the crop that you've planted. Okay. And uh, that's why in most cases, I'm sure you've ever heard of, uh, we are going to buy manure or we are going to apply manure into our garden. Yes. Now the manure, we are going to see it later. The manure, uh, we have organic manure from the, 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 the shaft that we collect from the field, from the, 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 the refuse of the vegetables that we sell here. Yes. And also sometimes we go and collect wood shipping from uh, the tea buyers where they do the saw milling and all that. And all yeah. that. Then that we come and apply here. But we apply it because we know the state of our soil. Do we apply when we have already put our seedlings or before? Um, it's better to apply the manure before planting. So you dig your garden properly. Now like here, we do our garden. We are going to see some of the fresh redone gardens. Okay. We do make, prepare the garden, we just plow. Mm -hmm. And then we make them into these beds. Okay. Each bed carries two lines of, say like of the cabbages, as you can see them here. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose for this is so that when I'm here, I can be able to easily work on either side of the bed and I don't have to, spe to step mm. on where the vegetables are. Okay. So that garden will always remain, you know, soft and permeable, mm. easily, you know, for water to pass through and all that kind of thing. Mm. And also when you are weeding, you know, you are weeding from, as in you don't have to worry, oh, I'm stepping on the cabbage and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, after you have applied the manure, then in this case, because this place is super hot, yeah. we lay the irrigation system. <laughs> People who are watching mm. gas is so hot. It's it so is, hot here, yeah, yeah. It's African hot. It's yeah. Mm. Now we we lay the drip lines. Mm. We are going to also see some of the freshly laid drip lines. Yes. Now the drip lines help us to supply the water into the garden. Mm -hmm. Then we come planting. Uh, our our seedlings. transplanting the Transpl seedlings okay. from the nursery. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure uh, we'll be able to see what we have in the nursery. Later. Yes, yes. Uh, we transplant from the nursery into the field following the pre perforated holes on our drip lines. Okay. So these drip lines come with um, emitters at 30 centimeter spacing. Okay. Uh, well, as per this crop. So you go following the emitters. So what you're trying to say is uh, different crops, different meters? Yes. Sometimes you find, for example, if you are doing cucumber, cucumber you can do it at the same spacing as the cabbages. So they may need a different irrigation uh, spacing or, mm -hmm. or the, those emitters that emit the water at mm -hmm. different intervals. Yes. But this particular case here, we are talking of 30 centimeters. Okay. So you now follow those emitters and you go planting where okay. the emitter is. That's where you plant your cabbage. Remember, remember you have already put the manure, mm -hmm. you've already set the irrigation system, mm. then you plant your cabbage. Okay. From there, it's crop care. Uh, uh, Lawrence, why Lacho Hospital? Oh. <laughs> why Lacho? Well, I can say Lacho. Because we have, we have a lot of hospitals. Oh, yes. We have a lot of hospitals. And why, did, how, how come you chose uh, Lacho? Uh, I think it's a two-way thing. Mm. Uh, first of all, I want to say the reason why we're here is because we love what we do. Okay. That's number one. Mm -hmm. As task firm, you know, getting something that is going to have an impact not only on an individual customer, but in a whole society, a whole group. For example, now here we are talking of the hospital. The hospital has more than 3,000 people in there mm. who, on a daily basis, eat from our garden. Mm. We have patients there who eat from here. Mm -hmm. We have patient caregivers, for example, the ca cancer caregivers. They come here on a daily basis. Mm. Some, they help us to take care of the garden. And at the end of the day, they go home with fresh vegetables, which they need mm. at the hospital. Okay. So that is number one. 
Number two, um, we had um, a, a conversation with the management mm -hmm. and um, the management of the hospital. Yes. Okay. And uh, they gave us their passion. We understand them because this is what we do, mm. and their willingness to give us the opportunity to be able to feed them. So we came up with an, an understanding of our own, mm. which we did and which we are implementing, with um, a mandate to, number one, provide them with the nutrition that they need or the food that they need in the hospital. Mm. Since this is a hot place, we may not find some of the vegetables in the market. Yes, and yeah. actually they are not easy to find. Mm. Because, for example, during the dry season, like you can see, it's very hard to find the cabbage growing out there. Mm. But here you come any day, you find mm. something mm. that you can be put And to organic. And it's organic. I, I mean, um, you cannot give, again, sick people more toxin. You, you're not helping them, you're, yeah, killing them. you're killing them. So you have to be very careful what you give them. Okay. So um, our mandate was one, to give them that nutritional need that they need, that the hospital needs. Yes. Then to be able to train these caregivers on how to grow these things so that when they leave the hospital, they can be able to take care of those patients themselves. Mm. Then we also have now, of course, the community surrounding Lacho Hospital. So we also have to teach them and also they can be able to come and buy the vegetables from here. Mm. Yeah, from a centralized place and also a regulated production place. So if someone wants such an offer, do you yes. give out such offers to come to Task Farm? Okay. We shall talk about it. Okay. Um just like I told you, we're in Gulu, it's very hot, but uh things around me, I'm enjoying the environment. I'm not even minding about the heat, I'm not even minding about the sun. Okay, right now, briefly, I want us to go and look at how are you supposed to manage your nursery? Because if you want good yields, it starts with the nursery. Actually, it starts with the seed. After the seed, the nursery is very, very important. So here, meet Madame Joyce. She's going to teach you how to manage your nursery well to get such beautiful products. And then after Joyce, we are going to continue with the different uh, stages of our cabbages. Um, Task Farm has been here for only three months. But yeah. in those three months, they've been able to have at least three categories or stages of the cabbages and other uh, vegetables. So I want us to go and look at, after the nursery, I want us to go and look at the cabbages that we already harvesting. Let's come back. Um, by the name is Joyce Navide. I work with Task Farm Uganda as an administrator. We do different things at Task Farm Uganda and among them is uh, the nursery management where we raise seeds to seedlings before they are transplanted to the main garden. Today we are going to look at uh, how we plant a tomato from the time we plant it in the nursery, how we look after it until it matures to go to the garden. Today, the type of tomato that we are going to look at is called anso. But before you plant any seed, you have to ensure that, uh, check the packaging date. When you go to buy that seed, ensure that its packaging date is up to date. It must not be more than six months from the time it was packaged. This is because if a seed was packed six, more than six months ago, its germinability is poor. And if the germinability is poor, likewise its performance in the main garden will be poor. So before you purchase any seed, please check the packaging date. And I repeat, make sure it's not more than six months ago that it was packaged. So we have different items that we use for our nursery. One of them is the tray. This is a seedling tray. 
we have them in different sizes. The one I'm using today has 288 pots. That means it carries 288 seeds. And if they all germinate, if I get 100% germination, I'll have 288 seedlings. Second, we have what we call the planting medium, which is the pit moss. This is a soilless growing medium that we use in our nursery. It's very good in that if the seed is uh, okay, you are assured of 99% germination. This medium is very good. It only allows or it retains a particular amount of water that the seed requires. The excess, it releases it out. So that is why we use it and it's very good as we shall see ahead. So I've talked about the seedling tree, I've talked about the planting medium, and I've talked about the seed. These are the three things that we need for our nursery. So we get the planting medium, <coughs> we put it on the tray, as you see. After that, we make a small press or depression on this medium that we put on the trays. This we do it to create allowance where we are going to put the seed. After that, we get our seed, whichever seed it may be. These are seeds of tomatoes. So we go on putting or placing one seed in each pot. One seed in each pot. When they fall too, you have to remove the other because if you leave them there, it will be a wastage. They cannot grow from that same pot. And once we are done with putting them in those pots, we get this very growing medium and cover. You put a small layer such that when we go for the watering process, the water can easily go through and reach the seed. We don't need to put a heap of the planting medium where we are covering the seed. We just need to cover it with some little planting medium, then uh, we'll go for the watering process. After covering the seed, we bring it to where we do the watering from. This is the nursery section now. When we get here, we start watering it. Cause for the seed to germinate, we require sunlight, we require water and then warmth. So this is one of the ingredients that we require for the plant, for the seed to germinate into a seedling. So we water them properly, ensuring that the water goes up to the seed, because if the seed doesn't get water, the seed will not germinate, instead it will rot. So we water them properly every day, over and over again, as we wait for them to germinate. These are seedlings of tomatoes that have germinated. When they germinate at this stage, we reduce the amount of water that we give them because now they have come out. Now they just need a little water to help them grow. So we continue watering them, but with reduced amount of water as they continue growing. Like you see, there are a variety of vegetables in here. All these have germinated. So we watch those these babies 
until a level where they have reached and they are mature enough to be taken to the garden. I'm taking you to another set of tomato that has germinated and has been growing for like a week. This is it. It has been out for like a week. So after this, I expect it to be in the nursery for two weeks. That is now three weeks after planting. After that, it will be ready to be transplanted or to be taken to the garden. Right now, I may not have a tomato that is ready for transplanting, but I can use another plant. This is Kuma Wiki. This Kuma is ready to be taken to the garden. Actually, this one will be transplanted within two or three days. It will be taken to the main garden. And uh, that is what we do with the nursery section. In here, we have a variety of vegetables that we grow or that we raise. After raising them and taking care of them for between three, a maximum of five weeks, that is for the sweet peppers, then uh, they'll, go, they'll be taken to the garden. But before, when we go to the main garden, how do we pick them from these trays? Because these are trays we shall not plant in the main garden when they are in these trays. We have to remove the seedling and then plant it in the garden. So when we are transplanting, we press below the tray to get out the seedling. This seedling comes out with all its, its roots intact. This is better than the, our ordinary method of where we would uh, make the nursery on the ground or in the soil. And when time comes for transplanting it, we cut or dig them out and in that process we do affect the roots. But with this method, the seedling comes out intact with its roots in that when you take it to the garden, it doesn't receive the shock or the roots are not damaged once you transplant it, give it water, it just continues with its growth. Okay, you are welcome back. Now, we came here on May the 1st and the cabbages that we planted were these ones here. Now, these cabbages, of course, after three months, we are harvesting and selling. In fact, most of them we have already harvested and sold. And this was the first crop of cabbages that we have been able to sell from this farm since we came to this place. Now, I'm very sure on my signs you can be able to see the maize. The maize mainly is a border crop. That's why we, we have the maize on the borders. This maize is simply to be able to separate, say, the cabbages from the tomatoes, which are on the other side. We, shall go, we are going to have a look at them later. And then to be able to also separate from the kills, which is on the upper side. Now, these cabbages here, we've already been harvesting. We are going to see another cabbage, which again, we are going to start harvesting, um, yeah, towards the end of this week. We're going to start harvesting. And now that was the second crop that we planted after this crop. Then the third crop, we are going to see it again, is in block two. 
where we uh, we are going to have another crop which we'll be harvesting in uh, in a month's time. We have another crop of cabbage in block 16. So as you can see, when we are talking about crop production, it's not just a matter of planting the cabbages and they grow a new cell. No, 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 it's the sustainability of the same. How do we make sure that the person who has been eating the cabbage can be able to get his cabbages throughout? So you must have a crop that you're harvesting today, a crop that you harvest tomorrow, and the crop that you harvest after that day. So that's why we are here, to make sure that this production does not stop. Let's go to another crop, I mean to another cabbage, and then you see how it looks now at this stage. This one we have already harvested. We are just doing the final touches on harvesting and selling. But let's go and look at uh, the one that we are going to harvest starting the end of this week. Thank you. Yes, now this was our second crop. You've just seen what we have been harvesting. This is now what we are going to start harvesting this week. And as you can see things, the cabbages are ready. So simply, this is what we were saying, that you need to have what you, are say, you, are, you can be able to give out this week, then the following week, then the other week. It's that consistency that makes a farm a farm. Now, like you can see here, now these cabbages, yes, they are mature, yes, but they just need to be a little time just to be a little bit harder. Just the hardening bit is all what we are looking at. So, but as you can see them, now the cabbages are actually available. So this now was the second crop that we planted. And as I explained, the reason why you have this maize on the sides is simply to be able to prevent these cabbages from the crop that is on the other side. So in case we have any chemical that we are applying on the other side, it doesn't spill over into these cabbages that we are selling today or at that particular time when we are selling it. So that's the reason why we have these crops on the boundary lines. We call them border crops. This is the cabbage that I was talking about. This is the cabbage that we are going to eat today. Thank you. Let's go and see some other crops.